Good morning. It's Monday. Just getting up here as the sun comes up. Got lots of chores to do really quick to start the day. It's very busy in the morning in the countryside. And then I've got to drive four hours back to Vientiane. A little peek into how things go in the morning here. Maybe show a few things that I haven't shown before. As I am leaving this morning. Got lots of different cages for the chickens. Over there, over here. Chickens everywhere. Kids having a little early morning rice before. <laughs> Kids just having a little bit of food before to start the day and then we'll have usually have breakfast a little bit later. Putting out the washing to start. Oh, he already burning all this stuff over here. All right, I think the bathroom's free. <laughs> Need to brush my teeth. Let's go this way. It's already done and over with. I'll have to come back soon. All right, guys. Look at the baby. <laughs> Fixing up the tractors. I thought he said just the light wasn't working, so you have to have the light. I don't know if you've been out into the country, truly into the country, but if you have, it's pretty scary when it gets dark. You can't see anything. It's pitch black out here. Even with the motorcycle light, the beams on high is kind of okay, but it's just so dark you, outside of where the light shines. You don't, you can't see if anything's coming. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend driving at night here. Not at all, not at all. So that's out of the question. I'd always drive during the day with the roads. If you're coming to Lao, plan to travel during the day if you're driving a motorbike I would not recommend traveling at night this is interesting one way to split wood here we are in the kitchen where they actually have the shaman stand set up. He said his mom is the shaman, so if anybody's sick or have any problems, they come to her and she assesses whether or not her shaman abilities will be able to help them. And if she can, then she will perform the ceremony. I would love to film something like that, but there wasn't anybody doing that while we were here. And then I showed, and then here is where we cook. That right there is boiled water from the well. That's what we use for drinking water. That's the kitchen, y'all. Oh, wow. I hear something. I think his dad's about to play this Hmong instrument. Oh, wow.
call English? Uh, we don't have this instrument in America so, <laughs> or yes. like in back home. We don't have this instrument. This is a special instrument for here. Yeah. So, so we just call it the can. Can, can, yeah. can, can. Same. Use the word can. Can is like loud, loud. Yes. But <coughs> we call can. Can. Can, yeah. Can, can is some thing that we play for more traditional. We can play for like the party or in the for Mong Nui Ya. For Mong Nui and also mostly the play for Mong Nui for like uh, Silapa and uh, yeah. Silapa. Art. Arts, yeah. yeah. They play for art and also like uh, when someone passed away, uh -huh. they also play that like to send the spirits to to heaven yeah. or like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Usually when someone pass away for someone who believes in spirits, mm -hmm. right? So when someone pass away, they use this one to play yeah. at the funeral, okay. right? And also mostly people use to play in Hong Nui Ya for party. party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a very famous of Hmong, Hmong culture and Hmong, Hmong traditional things to play, Hmong, Hmong arts. Yeah. Is it, <laughs> is it one of the more popular instruments to play for Hmong people? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. If you you see in the Hmong movie and you always see they're holding this one uh, and playing uh, this one. Always yeah. this one. <laughs> See you soon. Back to the school, kids. No joke. Even when I speak loud, sometimes the, my emotions or the inflection in my voice from just being happy or whatever my emotion is at the time it affects the tones. But it's not that I can't. You can't add the inflection and emotion while speaking with the tones. It's just sometimes. I let them screw up my tones. Oh, oh. Right.